video with me, JD. You were joining me for the round 21 score review. So let's jump into it. Uh, another decent week for me. Uh, what was my round rank? Top 1600. That's pretty good. Almost at the 2600. I uh, was actually over it, but then the Laird got scaled back, lost a fair few points actually, which I'm sure helped my overall rank because I didn't have him as captain. But yeah, meant that I missed that that nice little milestone, which is a bit of a shame. What's my season rank up to? So almost in the top 2K now, top 1%, which is very good recovery drive that we've got going on here. Actually, speaking about drivers, my boy, Piastri, going to be in Formula 1 next year. Very excited about that. Very excited. But let's jump into the team. Um, so... There's not a lot to talk about here from a super coach perspective. I think the big thing is what we do with Crips. Oh, and I haven't checked his money yet. Oh, what is Brayshaw? This is going to be big. Oh, no. 700 short. That's bad. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Um, oh, that's rough. I think it was one point off being able to afford him. Uh, okay. So yeah, well, Crips is probably the big one for the week. It looks like he's going to get suspended at least for a couple. I'd say left the ground, hit him head high, concussed, uh, had a realistic alternative to tackle or do something else. Uh, people will point to the real incident at the start of the year on Rao as a reason why he gets off, but I think that's pretty unlikely. I think he's getting at least two weeks, maybe three for that bump. Um, so, yep, so I think we're going to be having, uh, being forced into trading Crips. And um, let's just get my loophole off. Yeah, so I took the, the VC on Oliver, which ended up being better than Laird, which is good. I think Dunkley was my only higher option, which wasn't really realistic. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk through some Crips trade options for basically if you're at the price and if you've maybe got a little bit more money, we'll talk through those. Uh, but just quickly running the team down. So defense overall, I think was pretty good. It was quite interesting. Like Short and Crisp have been obviously down. Both had somewhat better games. I mean, the 77 still no good. Short's 105 is acceptable at least, which is nice. Um, Himmelberg had a really weird game. It was basically invis invisible for the middle part of the game, but had good first and last quarters. Uh, Doherty was very good. Uh, Dawson was good and Sinclair was good as well. So yeah, this was... All, all pretty nice here. I think the disappointing ones were a lot of the trade-in targets this week. So Stewart, I don't think, had a particularly good good game. 48 there. Uh, was tagged for a lot of it. Don't think Gold Coast have the same level of tagging, but I was surprised by how well Stewart got tagged out of it. Maybe it was just the fact that he didn't have much kick-ins to help um, bolster his score this week. But yeah, that was, that was really surprising. Gave away a lot of free kicks as well, which is uncharacteristic. And those clangers really stuck up. And then, yeah, Redman, who a lot of people have been eyeing in. Uh, yeah, just the 68 didn't play particularly well, although that went, that went for a lot of Essendon. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously, you know, Hewitt as well, which is the big thing. I don't know if he's back this week, but... Um, all right. In the midfield, so Laird in his, what was it, 150th game? 200th game, 200th game, must be 200, right? He's been around long enough for 200. Um, yeah, he smashed it. More of what we've seen. I mean, he went up in price again, even though he's 700K. Um, 126 break even, given he's against North, he probably makes that, keeps going up in price. Um, of the other midfielders, Merritt struggled, uh, got tagged by Perryman. I always get Peatling and Perryman confused, the P's. One of them got knocked out, the other one tagged Merritt into oblivion. And when he wasn't getting tagged, he was getting worked pretty hard off the ball. Like, Proust was collecting him. And, yeah, this was a tough game for Merritt. We've seen GWS target him before, and they did it again successfully. Um, so, yeah, down game after multiple good weeks. Let, uh, Oliver bounced back. No tag this week. Um, Colling was one of the easy midfields to score on. Uh, looks like he's getting over the, the hand issue. So, yeah, Carlton have been have one of the tougher matchups this uh, through the year, but they have been down and with no Hewitt and no Crips, that midfield's quite depleted. So Oliver could continue to score well. Same with Petrarca. Um, Neil was very good. I'm surprised Carlton didn't put any work into him. He absolutely destroyed them. Chera seemed to be following him closely at times, but didn't do enough. McRae had another, I don't know, I guess somewhat disappointing score, but in a, in a dog's loss, like it's okay. 
Uh, next two games are pretty easy, so we'll forgive that. And then Miller uh, got a lot of attention as well, right, from the Hawks. Um, McGuinness went to him, which I, I was somewhat anticipated. Um, but yeah, like that's just that's just rough. Um, hopefully, you followed my captain, vice captain advice. What was Mills 106? That was a little bit disappointing, but obviously Oliver into Laird was what I suggested. So if you jumped on either of those, you had a good week uh, compared to most others. In the On the bench, like Owen's got a, a game again, so continue to tick up. Ambrosia was the sub. Uh, was there anyone else really worth talking about? Probably not. Tico was back and uh, continues to be, well, he will be good cover from here to the end of the year. Actually outscored Darcy. So if he had a way to loop him, <laughs> probably would be beneficial to do so. Um yeah, which is pretty wild, to be honest. Uh, rocks. All right, so Wits was good this week. I mean, I can't remember if it was George or someone was saying, like, he, he looks like about how he's been playing all the other week. So, uh, like, I'm not sure if it was just, like, slightly better, more hit out to advantage, whatever it is. Um, but he should continue to be fine. Darcy, this 59 felt underscored. I believe Freako tweeted that he had nine hit out shocked and just six hit outs to advantage. So that really does kill you as a ruck score. Even if you're getting lots of hit outs, if they're not going to advantage then, and you're getting them shocked, you actually end up losing more points than you gain, which probably explains why this score was so down, even though he played all right from what I felt against West Coast this week, which is a nice matchup. No, Nick Nat and Forms are obviously tough, but uh, West Coast as a whole, not particularly strong. So hopefully bounces back this week. In the forward line, my forwards did really well this week. Um, my bench cover stringer did not. Started off that game by giving a free kick away, which was a Harry Himmelberg goal, like straight off. Um, yeah, not good. And just net didn't really come back, even though he got a fair bit of mid-time. Um, the more relevant forwards here, though, I thought Bontempelli was pretty good, but faded late in that game. Led early, but yeah, faded. I uh, wonder if like the core key that he had the week before or something else was affecting him. Cogs on return basically played in the guts. With Taranto being a late out, that that helps, I would imagine, just less rotation. So it should be solid from here to the end of the year. Although they've got tougher matchups, I want to say. Yeah, Dogs this week and then Freo the week after. Freo's, yeah, I mean, neither of them are great. So look, still a good option, but not going to score amazing from here to the end. Park was really good. I'm surprised this was only a 103, to be honest. Uh, I think his fantasy score is a lot higher. Against Collingwood this week should continue to go well. But yeah, Parker's been good. Very happy with with him. Like there are a few players that when I picked them up, they've just been very good for me through the end of the year. Parker is one of them. Laird is another one. Just like consistently close to top of the line each week. Uh, Oliver's obviously been good for most of the year as well. Uh, Heaney has scored his fifth ton in a row. I think it was Tim Mitchell on Twitter that was saying that this is the first time he's had five tons in a row since 2018, which is a surprising statistic given how he can score, uh, but probably speaks to his consistency a little bit as a, as a, in that forward role, three on average, 110, five round average of 109 now, which is pretty nuts. Um, started off this game really poorly. It could have been much bigger. I think he, he's in his first two disposals. He had three clangers, which is amazing. Um, and had four clangers, like, you know, straight up to start the game. So to come back from that and score a 120 is very impressive and has been one of my better pickups through the back end of the year. Collingwood this week is easier for mids to score on. And at the SCG, you know, home ground could, could go decently against them again. I wouldn't lock that in or anything because Collingwood's obviously been good, but... Um, yeah, that's nice. He's back over 100 average for the year too. Uh, Dunkley had a nice bounce back game after weeks of being someone that you're like, oh, geez, I wish I could trade him out. He's gone, what, back to back 130, 155 after those three really poor games. Um, five round average back up to 99. So obviously hold him to the end of the year, especially with the nice matchups to finish the, the year. And English has been frustrating again, just not scoring like we saw at the start of the year. Once again, hopefully, like these GWS um, Hawks matchups should help him. Uh, dogs, very favorable fixture. So looking for big things out of all the dogs. Okay, so getting to the Crips trade dilemma. So there's probably like just broadly two things I'll talk about. If you could trade him to anyone, who would it be? And then if you've only got, you know, money around his price, who would you take? Um, by the way, like 
I, if I could pick anyone, I probably would pick Mills with Collingwood and Saints as the next two. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, if you didn't have Laird or Oliver or someone like that, and you could get up to them, I would. I'd avoid Neil. He probably gets tagged the next two weeks. Um, yeah, Brayshaw, if I had 700 bucks. Oh, my God. That's so annoying. Freo's run um, over the next two games is is like decent too. West Coast and GWS is the last two. Did I really miss out on that by one or two points? Bro, that's unlucky. Uh, Walsh should be okay actually as well with um, with uh, no crips. Um, wouldn't touch keys or anyone like that. I don't think I'd touch Kelly. They've got pretty tough matchups. Okay. Um, LDU is the one. So there's probably two that are priced below him that I think you could realistically look at. And that would be Chad Warner. So once again, Swan's fixture is pretty nice. Collingwood and GWS, the last two. Sorry, St. Kilda, the last two. Um, I do worry against St. Kilda that he could get tagged by Wind Hager. And even though um, they had a pretty nice matchup in North this week, he didn't score amazing. And then LDU is probably the other one that I think you could look at. So Adelaide and Gold Coast, the last two, pretty nice matchups there. Uh, like has been very good outside of the 68 against Essendon. Uh, so that, I think that's option one. Like, I don't think I really love like Mitchell, even though what Hawks matchup isn't bad either, right? They've got, oh no, they've got dogs still. Okay. Mm. So I think the other option, if you didn't want to do that, would be to get someone like, so for me, right, I've got Stringer as cover. So going down to zero trades, I'm a little bit worried because I won't have cover, right? Um, in my defense, if anyone goes down. So I think the only other option for me would be something like if I go Brayshaw, and that way I can cover any injuries except for Doherty, who's defender only, um, with like this stringer Brayshaw combo. So that'd be the other option, I think, if you are if you were short on funds, it's either gonna be LDU or you get in like a if you've already got bench cover, you can get like a DPP option to swing across the lines. Um if you can go up, then any of the big names that we've kind of talked about, I think are your your realistic options there. But, I mean, there really isn't that much to cover apart from that this week. Let's just quickly have a look at rankings. Uh, oh, actually, it's going to be too hard to do. I kind of want to see, like, how far off um, top 1,000 is. It's probably going to be, like, 300 points from where I am, which is unlikely to be chaseable down. I think I won on my legs this week too, right? Yeah, everything was a win. All right, well, that, that is it. There's not much to cover this week. Oh, wait, Vice Captain Captain, how could I forget? Uh, it's probably like one of the only important decisions that people have to make. So firstly, Adel Adelaide played North. So Vice Captain, Rory Laird, straight up. That's a very easy choice to make. Um, for those that don't own Laird, it will be a little bit tougher. I think uh, Sydney against Collingwood is probably a pretty good matchup for Mills. So he would be a C option, even though he's been somewhat inconsistent. Brayshaw against West Coast is a nice matchup. So I think that's an option there. We have Melbourne against Carlton. And I mentioned with Cripps and Hewitt both out of the midfield, assuming they're both out, I think Oliver becomes a really strong option again. Uh, and for those people, you could probably look at a vice captaincy of one of the dogs against GWS, I would imagine. Um, Neil against Inkilda. I think Neil's getting tagged by Winhager, so I probably am off that. Yeah, I think that's it. I think those are the only ones I'd really strongly consider this week. So for me, it's probably Laird into Oliver. So reverse of last week. Uh, but yeah, there's there's really not much more to it than that. So no need to make the video go any longer than what's required. I will wrap it up there. Thanks for watching. If you do have any questions, hit me up below. Um, you know, if you want to trade it, Crips, let me know how much money you've got to play around and I can give you options if uh, if they haven't been answered here. 
Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next one. Two more rounds to go. Peace.